And now, once again, Richard Thomas. Our stories so far have been about the close, loving bond of family. Unfortunately, there are circumstances that split families apart, and when that happens, communication can stop, and the gulf can grow wider and wider. But sometimes, a miracle can bridge that gulf and bring a family back together again. Lois DeSalvo was born in New York City in 1934, the only child of Thomas and Emma DeSalvo. Her father had a son, Robert, from a previous marriage, but the two half-siblings rarely saw one another. I always wish I had a brother or a sister. And knowing I had a brother and not having him live with us I was not too happy for me because I hated being an only child. In 1940, Bob joined the Army, and Lois wouldn't see him for five years. But when he returned, she asked him to walk her down the aisle at her wedding. I really wanted to get together with him again. I wanted to form a relationship with my brother as an adult. Unfortunately, family problems drove the two siblings apart. They would not see or speak to each other for the next 38 years. In the meantime, Lois would raise a family, lose her husband to cancer, remarry, and settle thousands of miles from New York in an adult community in Nevada. Sun City McDonald Ranch plays host each year to a giant swap meet. For Lois and her second husband, Ray Yuley, it's also become an annual event. But in 1999, Ray procrastinated and nearly missed the event that would change their lives forever. I'm late. We're all set up ready. So I, I decided at the last minute to take a table. And I took a table called number 47 or 46. I forget what it was. And I set my whole table up. Another bit of fate stepped in when Lois scheduled a doctor's appointment and couldn't join her husband. Ray would have to man their table alone all afternoon. God, you've got some pretty good stuff here, right? Whoa, are these sun-kissed oranges? Oh, yeah. Can I have one? Well, can't take it, it's free. Ray. Thanks a lot. Thank have you. Have a good day. Meanwhile, another couple also decided to join the sale at the last we minute. so late. Can we get a table? Yeah. I didn't know if I would be able to participate in this till late, and I just went up at the last minute and asked if they had any tables left, which they did, and I said, great. I signed up for number 47. But when they arrived at the table, it was already taken. I'm sorry, uh, this is our table. I just walked up and he said, oh, geez, I'm sorry, I've taken it. Would you mind taking 46? I said, no, I don't make no difference to me. As fate would have it, the husband had an appointment that would take him away that day as well. And I said, I'll be back, honey, as soon as I get finished. Bye-bye. That left Ray and the woman, total strangers, alone together. Looks like we're gonna be here for a while. Good he had you know, tons of stuff to sell, and he looked like he was very friendly and outgoing. And so I went over and introduced myself to this man. I'm Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne, I'm Ray. Hi, Ray, Ray. how Pleasure are you? you? Yeah. With introductions out of the way, Yvonne continued setting up her table. She set a painting down, and I uh, noticed the name DeSalvo on it. De Salvo? Yes. That's, that's my wife's maiden name. That's my name. And she started being very persistent about, you know, what's your wife's name? I said, well, her name is Lois. <laughs> my heart just leaped right up into my throat. My husband had a sister. He has not seen her in years. And I said, that's my husband's sister. And he said, no, 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 I don't think so. I don't think she has any siblings. And I said, oh, yes, she does. Do you know what our father's name is? No, I'm not. No, I'm bad at names. I'm sorry. And of course, I, I'm so excited. You know, my brain is really cooking. And I said, her father's name was Thomas, and her mother's name was, and the name just left. I couldn't think. And I said, as soon as my husband comes back, he'll tell you her mother's name. While they waited, a good friend of Lois and Ray's stopped by their table and learned about the strange coincidence. Oh, thanks for coming. Later, Bob DeSalvo returned as well. Yeah. Listen, I want you to meet somebody. Come on. And so I told him what had happened. Hi, Ray. This is my husband, Bob. And she said to me, what was Lois's mother's name? Emma. Emma? Emma. You got to be kidding. What? You got to be kidding. That's my wife's mother's name, Emma. And I said, oh, my God. This has got to be. 
<laughs> this has got to be it. And then I start talking to him, and it, it ended up that this was the brother, you know. It, you know, it's a shock. It, it just, Lois you know, would be returning know. shortly, and when she did, she would be reunited with her long-lost brother. Where is she? Hey, do me a favor. She's going to be here soon. Will you go see if you can find yes. her and get her over here as fast as you can? I'm going to Please. go find her. I'll be back. A few minutes later, Michelle spotted Lois as she pulled into the parking lot. Lois! I've been yelling at you! Come on! You have to come now! Okay. Hurry! What's wrong? And she said, Lois, Lois, you, you, you have to go over to the table. I said, yeah. Well, what do you think I'm doing? I'm going to the table. So I'm walking over to the table nonchalantly, and she's still, like, pushing me, you know. Hurry up, hurry up. And I said, well, you know, I'm going. I was very anxious because she wasn't showing up, Lois. And I'm here I am with all this excitement about this thing. And then I see my friend walking with Lois. And so I said to Lois, There's somebody I want you to meet. <laughs> I mean, she thought I was going to introduce this to an old friend or somebody. I said, OK, he's, he's met a neighbor. Your brother Bob. I said, no, it's not possible. You know, my brother, after all these years? And I don't know whether she recognized me or I recognized her. I don't know. But somehow or other, you just sort of know. It was just like unbelievable. I couldn't believe that something like this could happen. <laughs> well, he was ecstatic. And of course, there was so much excitement. I just can't explain it. It was just after all these years, and, and Bob is a very emotional person, so he was crying. <laughs> just couldn't believe that this really happened. I didn't think that it was possible that I would ever find this long-lost brother in Las Vegas at a garage sale who lives two and a half blocks from me and has been there for three years. How could that happen? It's a miracle. It's remarkable how strong the bond of family can be after nearly 40 years of separation. But we have the living proof of that bond, and they join us now. Hey there, how are you doing? Hi, Richard. Fine, Richard. Let's go back to that moment when you first saw each other at the garage sale. What was that like? Well, you know, it was something exciting. It was something we, we never thought was going to happen. No, it seemed. And it was, we were, I think we were both in awe. We both, you know. Shocked. Shocked. We were completely shocked because. Something like this doesn't happen. And how does it feel being brother and sister again? Wonderful. 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 <laughs> well, you both look very, very happy. Do you think there's a lesson that families can learn from this? Well, it's very important to stay in touch with each other. <clears throat> we, we tend to lose contact. I have, a, I have a fault that, you know, you get wrapped up in your own business. In the interim, her husband had died, her mother had died. Uh, I was, I got divorced. So my whole life was turned upside down. Her life was changed around. Mm. But you people did. should keep in touch with each other. They should. Yes, they should. And I want to thank you for sharing that lesson with all of us. Thank you, and thank you for thank asking you. us to be thank on your show. Thank you, Richard, very much.